in this medical toxicology case study, we explore the medical journey of a 39-year-old male patient with a history of chronic mercury exposure. The exposure originated from his minor father, who inadvertently brought home liquid mercury, leading to widespread contamination in their household. This situation was so severe that it necessitated the demolition of their home. The patient's initial exposure occurred approximately seven years ago, and he has since undergone multiple rounds of dimercaptose succinic acid, DMSA, chelation therapy to manage the toxic levels of mercury in his system. Despite these efforts, his mercury levels have fluctuated, requiring continuous monitoring and intervention. The patient presented with a range of symptoms indicative of mercury toxicity, including abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, blindness, body ache, and chronic pain without any focal weakness. Laboratory tests revealed a lipas level of 134 units per liter, a TSH level of 00.93 milli international units per liter, and normal liver function tests. His blood pressure was notably elevated at 161 over 106 millimeters of mercury. Other significant lab results included a sodium level of 134 milliequivalents per liter and a blood urea nitrogen level of 22 milligrams per deciliter. The patient's magnesium level was 2.2 milliequivalents per liter. His hemoglobin level was 14.7 grams per deciliter. His platelet count was 199x103 per cubic millimeter. His white blood cell count was 14x2x103 per microliter and his INR was 1. Given the patient's history and presentation, there was a considerable risk of neuropsychiatric disturbances, including personality changes, hallucinations, delirium, insomnia, irritability, fatigue, memory loss, erythism, tremors, and gingivostomatitis. Additionally, mercury exposure can lead to acrodynia in children and some adults, characterized by severe leg cramps, irritability, insomnia, diaphoresis, hypertension, miliarial rash, and peeling erythematous skin on the fingers, hands, and feet. Renal dysfunction has also been reported in association with mercury toxicity. The management plan for the patient involved continuous monitoring and chelation therapy. Blood and urine mercury levels were ordered to assess the extent of the exposure. The patient was advised to follow up with his primary care physician for ongoing evaluation and management. A poison and drug information center played a key role in the case, offering recommendations for chelation therapy and collaborating with the patient's healthcare providers. The patient's treatment regimen included a 19-day course of Susima chelation with a dosing schedule of 10 mg per kilogram three times daily for the first five days and 10 mg per kilogram twice daily for the subsequent 14 days. The patient's last recorded weight was 80 kg, resulting in a dosage of 800 mg three times a day for the first five days and 800 mg twice daily for the remaining 14 days. Succimer is generally well tolerated with few adverse events report. Throughout his treatment, the patient's mercury levels were closely monitored and additional rounds of chelation therapy were considered based on his symptoms and lab results. The patient's response to chelation therapy was meticulously observed to reduce mercury levels while managing his symptoms effectively. The prognosis for mercury toxicity depends on the extent of the exposure, the efficacy of chelation therapy, and the patient's overall health. In this case, the patient's mercury levels were significantly elevated, necessitating ongoing treatment and monitoring to mitigate his symptoms and reduce the risk of long-term complications. Thanks for watching Medical Toxicology. Take care.